Must be a beautiful day for Waluigi fans today, isn't it, Rendon? Yeah, totally. I'm sure they're really happy. I know, after that Smash Direct and that E3, oh, yeah. just knowing that he uh, will not be there. Right. I, I, a lot of people care about that. I don't really get it. Well, to give some peace for the people, I have a uh, I have an insider story from Nintendo, my Nintendo Insider. Oh, okay, wait. So you have a Nintendo Insider? Don't worry about that. Um, okay, so to be clear, this is a completely true story. Completely, 100% true. Fact check it, anything. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so our dear friend Waluigi, once he had heard the news that Smash Ultimate was being made, he said, you know what, it's my time. So he okay. went to Sakurai's office. He busted in the door. He says, Sakurai, it's my turn. It is wah time. The time <laughs> for the wah. Wah, wah time, okay. <laughs> and Sakurai was sitting there. He was looking at the piece of paper in front of him. And he was actually working on the characters he was going to put down. Okay. And so he looks up in disgust with how Waluigi walked into his office. He said, you know what, Waluigi? Wow. In the head. Wow. Tragic. And the that, grump that birthday party, the grump birthday party sound did yeah. happen from, from right. what That's my exactly sources told that. me. Okay. All right. Let, let's get into the podcast. This is a podcast, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Hey, episode hey. one of player five. Player five. Player episode five. one. That's right. <laughs> That's a great. That's a great sound bit. Thank you. It's the beginning. It's bits. like it's like the Phantom Menace of podcast. Okay, but we're not going to be lame. Okay. Unless um, unless people associate you with Jar Jar Binks. I don't know. I feel like sure. I feel like we're a little lame, but it's it's all good. <laughs> you know what? I do have a theory as to why Phantom Menace is lame to the people. Because let's uh, really look okay. at it. It had one of the coolest Siths, I in my opinion, with the two lightsabers, and I think Dark yeah, Fox cool. like a cool character. Not only did he get wrecked, it's one of the first movies you could find Liam Neeson get wrecked at. And I think that just threw an emotional oh, turn for everyone that they're just like, no way. It's not it. Yeah. So I think that's no, why. Yeah. It's You're actually, I never thought about that. That's true. I Maybe know, have but back on track. I, don't know. I feel like Jar Jar Binks is really the core of it. Well, until people find out he's the actual Sith. Oh, okay. All right. That's right. right, Let's just, let's get on with this. I believe I'm the conspiracy theorist. But with that being said, episode (laughs) one of the Player 5 podcast. I'm excited. I know Rendon is. My name is Austin. I am your co-host with Rendon. And we have known each other for how long now? Like Uh, like 20 years? 20 years. I think it has been. Two decades. Almost exactly 20 years. Uh, We are old. 24 years old to be exact, both Renan and I. Uh, we definitely had that special bond where at a young age, when we when we first walked into school on our first days, I walked into that class, I probably looked at Renan and said, you know, we're going to be best friends. And here we are, yeah. 20 years later, sharing our voices upon the interwaves on our that very own likely. podcast. I'm not the one to and, do that. So. I know. But this <laughs> podcast will be a lot about gaming and movies. This is two things we are both very passionate about. Uh, we right. both have a lot of the same and different interests in gaming and movies. It's probably mostly about games, but we have we have movies in it. One, because yeah. Renan's a huge Disney fan. Right, as we'll see later. Not only that, because this is a gaming podcast as well, we have a special special thing towards the end. Renan, do you want to spoil that or keep that a secret for now? Uh, we can, I can give, I can give a little tease on it. Tease? Yeah. Ooh, tease. <laughs> okay. In episode one, we're already giving teases. Yeah. Crazy. Oh, man. Um, so, yeah, uh, we're a game podcast, mostly mostly about games. So we think it's cool and important to play a game every podcast. So we should, we'll should we have a game at the end of every episode. So it's a way for people so they can stick around and have a lot of fun and um, play along at home. It'd be, it'd be really cool. Yes, we think it's important that y'all get engaged. We have games for y'all to get engaged about as we build our community stronger. We have different games. It'll be different for every episode. Some will be in rotation. We'll explain the rules and everything once we get there. It's going to be a lot of fun. But for the time being, Rendon, that that Smash Direct from yesterday. That Smash yesterday, Direct, though. Is, it was yesterday as the time of this recording. 
how did you feel about it? Like just general opinion up front. I don't know. It was awesome. It was a lot to take in. I, I was I was feeling really good until I saw that one shot and I saw Dr. Mario and I went crazy. I know. History between us. Um yeah. tell, tell he the hates, history. He hates Dr. Mario because I actually know how to use Dr. Mario. Okay. And, um, <laughs> he he gets wrecked every time. Don't let him No, tell you that's not I wreck him. Hundred percent of the time. I don't think you've maybe ever beat in me Smash Four melee. No, no for way. all no, you beat me every time. Uh, but with that being said, I had a lot of mixed emotions about it. What really got me was that one scene where the girl was outside and she put her headphones in. I thought we were going to get that native voice chat that oh Fortnite got, and then it's like the MP3 player type thing, which is cool. I'm not dissing it. Right. Just when it happened. I was like, yes, NATO voice chat, and it didn't happen. Yeah, that's sad. I mean, it's okay. I mean, I know I want it to. It doesn't really make sense to not have it, especially if Fortnite got it. Uh, I don't really get why Nintendo's limiting their own uh, game in that Being way. Being stingy. They're always stingy. Yeah. Um, so real quick, before we really get into like the new characters that were announced, was there anything about like the music that they announced, the items, all the stages. Yeah. I, I think have a it lot was of like stuff. uh they they had a lot of stuff. They had um, a lot, yeah. I feel like this is going to be the one last big dump of information we're going to get about it before before the release. We might get another direct between now and the release, but really it's not going to be anything this big. This is like so much information. But yeah, no uh I want to talk about Luigi being in the intro video for the castlevania characters that's um, right that was, that was crazy. a good that was a good trailer it really was like so it was so good like not only like graphically and like how it they like played it but like dude can we talk about the fact that like louisi straight up died and his ghost was like staring at his dead corpse that's can pretty we, dark can we I, I think we're going to talk about later about how dark these have been because the ridley trailer had ridley stabbing mario and mega man right They've yeah. been going kind of a dark route here. Yeah, you're right. And I'm all about it. <laughs> yeah, well, all you, about you it. like dark things. You, I do. For, for the listeners, his favorite Zelda game is Twilight Princess, if that gives you and an Majora's idea. Mask. Majora's Mask. Yeah. The Yours super is Wind dark, Waker. dark ones. Yeah, mine's Wind Waker. I'm like the opposite. Wind Waker Total. is my favorite Zelda game. Fight me, whoever wants to. Oh, but oh, trust me, we will fight on on a maybe on a later podcast, but we will definitely have a Twilight yeah, Princess. Yeah, that's that's a that's a whole episode, a graphical Zelda fight. <laughs> yeah, well, in that trailer, I I did like it. Uh, actually, I want to go back to the E three trailer because I know they changed up uh Zelda or or not Zelda Link. Sorry, I'm gonna get destroyed yeah. for that one. Link with his Breath of the Wild outfit. I don't know if they've shown Luigi much before because they showed the Poltergeist three thousand off a lot. I really yeah. do hope that's like that's awesome. a change up. I don't think it will be. I'm pretty sure that was just for trailer purposes. But if they did do a Luigi's Mansion version of Luigi, I would not be upset one bit. Yeah. So you mean like as like a fighting style, he uses the Luigi's Mansion? Yes. Pop props? Yes. Oh yeah, that would be three thousand really cool. on Luigi. That'd be amazing. Dude, we played the crap out of that game. Like when we were like or maybe like an Echo Fighter because they have a Doctor Mario. <laughs> um, oh gosh. For Mario, they they need to have a Luigi's Mansion for Luigi. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it'd be Echo. I I think I think you could play a like make Luigi's full character a Luigi's Mansion version and still feel like he's Luigi. Like it wouldn't change him up that much. Also, Doctor Mario plays way differently than Mario. He's not exactly an Echo character. Not exactly. There's a there's a couple differences. Mostly the down B. Mario's got a uh, flood. Dr. Yeah, Mario and has then, a tornado. Isn't uh, his up be a little different too? Uh, I think it doesn't go as high as Mario's. Yeah. He's a At least in Smash 4. So we'll, we'll see in, in Smash 5. So bringing it back oh, to gosh. Smash 5, uh, they went over some new rules too. We're going to get to the, the Castlevania characters as well. But the rules they went over, uh, some was Smash Meter, which is not a Smash Ball, but you can actually build up your Smash Meter. I thought that was cool. Yeah. That was interesting. That's interesting. That might be something I play with. Yeah. I mean, I think it's cool because a lot of fighting games do that. Um, uh, you know, like pretty much every main fighter game has like some kind of, you know, smash meter where you fill it up and you have this one big, you know, crazy turn, like more combat and injustice too. They have that, 
I'm pretty sure they have it in Street Fighter and you know other games. I just I don't know exactly. I don't play a lot of Street Fighter, but yeah, no, I feel like that's really cool. They're taking that idea from other games that's really successful and making it. I did notice. I don't know if you noticed this, but if you use the smash meter and you fight the the final smash is not as powerful as if you were yeah, to get it as and an they item. did they did, did uh, mention that? that in the trailer yeah uh, another thing they added which is cool i, I think it i think it makes yeah. sense because everyone can get their final yeah. smash every game it'd be you know not chasing around a, a smash ball and, and messing everyone up another thing they announced is tourney they're bringing tourney back and they have like a very serious looking mario once you accept that tournament i thought that was cool looking yeah getting back to, to the, the darkness. darkness uh Tourney's back. They have Darkness. Squad. I thought Squad was, <laughs> was a pretty cool concept. Oh, Recap yeah. Recap for, for everyone listening. There's 103 stages. You could turn stages hazards off, which I think is awesome. I've been begging for that since, like, Brawl. Right. Because there's a lot of stages. I like the design. I think, I think that's really cool. Um, I like that design because uh, it's, it's not exactly the Omega. That's, like, on one end of the spectrum where you're just, like, completely flat, no, nothing. It's just skinned, like, the the level and then you can just turn the hazards off so you can get the different level like different um platforms and stuff that each stage brings but without all the you know random stuff happening in the background that people yeah, get mad about because i like a lot of designs of some of the stages especially in four but i never played them because of stage hazards uh they also have morph stages yeah stage morph that okay i think that's extremely cool let just finish the rundown we'll go through we'll like kind of talk about more each more right. each topic uh, again. so just the quick recap 800 plus tracks classic mode crazy and a blurred thing in the menu a, bl a blurred option in the menu that we don't know yet could be a dare i say a single player mode story mode yeah maybe I, I would love it i will say subspace and mystery from brawl was actually a really good storyline. Like it had a good plot and everything. It's very underrated for it being the story for a fighting game. Usually those aren't they don't really spend a lot of time on that. And I that was really good. And I feel like if they bring something like that back, not exactly the same thing, obviously I want them to innovate and make a new plot. I would be really excited about it. My guess when I saw that menu blurred out part, I, I that was my guess on what that was too. I was thinking, oh they're just gonna do a story mode because it's like one of the only things they didn't talk about so far because there was so much they talked about. I think too. It was definitely underrated. And I hope they do have a uh, a single a story mode. I'm excited to see what they would do if they had a story mode. But uh, to the meat and potatoes now. And as you said, that was a dark Castlevania trailer. I think a lot of people knew Simon Belmont was making it. I've heard that thrown around a lot. And that was also in a 4chan leak because, you know, all of those are legit. I mean... More legit than yeah, my obviously. Nintendo Insiders, obviously. obviously. 4chan had a leak, <laughs> but this one was notable because they mentioned Ridley, they mentioned Daisy, and they also mentioned Simon Belmont. And that was a pretty, okay. pretty good list there, considering all that happened. So a lot of people had a feeling Simon Belmont would make it, and here he is. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I mean, I'm I'm excited. Um, not necessarily because like I'm a huge fan of Castlevania. Um, I do remember playing it though. I remember playing it a little bit as a kid. You know, playing on um, you know, just like the old Super NES stuff like that. And um, the whip. I think it's really cool because I don't think we have had a character in Smash Brothers that has a whip as a weapon. And I think that's going to be really awesome. I'm sure it's going to be part I of think this. Grab. Kind of. Uh, Sheik did. Kind of. But I think this is the real the real yeah, one. I I would say I would say Samus's like grapple is more like a whip and than she's Samus. Oh yeah, she did kind of have a whip with her um her kind gun of. turned into a whip. That's true. I mean, but I'm just saying this is like a legit like it's supposed to be a whip. They're gonna it's gonna be not only is it gonna act like like really cool part of this fighting style. It's gonna be you know that flavor like you're gonna get a lot of like the whip sounds probably and then the cross the throwing cross that's back, pretty awesome back to whip sounds we're in it, we're in it with the teases <laughs> whip sounds getting it okay <laughs> uh, but yeah i'm excited uh, did you expect they were also going to get bring Richter i did not in? that was a huge surprise to me that's where i kind of was like i'm not against it and I, it, it'll remain to be seen what other characters they announced i don't think there's going to be many a lot left 
and that's what kind of worries me because you know back with like smash right. 4 and such i kept saying you know we got we fit trainer when we didn't get such and such right and yeah there's a lot more out there that right? people in general want and we kept getting we fire emblem trainer. characters and we got another one we'll get to it in a second yeah you know so we'll see who who else they bring in uh i'm hoping we get you know maybe five more i think we're i don't think we're gonna get any more than five more new ones we've seen yeah probably five more new ones and that i mean in my opinion that that's gonna include like dlc because i mean the roster is getting so long already i don't know if they release many more i don't know if they'll do dlc they they've talked as if they're not going to Oh, okay. I'm sure they have a lot more. And and he said he did say in the direct that every character will be revealed before the game releases. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I think so. Based on his wording, that's how a lot of people took it. Uh but yeah, Richter, Echo character to Simon Belmont. I'm excited. I wonder how they will play different. I'm sure one's gonna be heavier, one's gonna be lighter, you know, a little bit of differences. So we'll see. Probably probably like a Fox and Falco type ordeal. Uh but bringing it back to Echo Fighters and a lot of Fire Emblem characters. We got Krom, which I can't be mad at because they teased him in the trailers for Smash 4 with him saying, I guess I'll get a chance next time. I don't know if you remember that when they announced, I think it was Lucina. Yeah, they, I remember that. They, they, uh, they played around with Krom, but at the end of the trailer, he says, I think I'll get my chance next time. So I felt like you had to bring Krom in. You get a lot of you get a lot of flack if you didn't. Yeah, and he's, I mean, he's an Echo Fighter, which, you know, uh, for anyone, that, I mean, I don't know if we haven't talked about it, this is the first episode, but Echo Fighters are going to just be like a reskin of an, a character, like Daisy is an Echo Fighter of Peach, but he's going to be Echo Fighter of Ike, right? Of It seems like Ike and Roy. I don't know. He Whenever has, he does his, uh, he has like a up air where it's, um, the aether. not up air, it's a uh, up B. Yeah. Yeah, the aether. He has and an that's, aether. that's like, Definitely, but I, when you look at his B, his charge up B, he has the same as Roy's, and his uh, his throwing is oh, the same okay. as Roy's, and his side B, the uh, combo side B, is the same as Roy's. So okay. he, I think he's a mix of Ike and Roy, which is cool. Yeah, I guess that means Echo Fighters don't have like hard and fast rules on them that they have to be just like the character that they well, are honestly, skinned I, I after. I think Sakurai's kind of thrown out the rules with some things because even when yeah, we get to these assist trophies, which I have a list of them here. Just real quick, he has Rathalos in there, which is going to be a, a boss hazard on the Monster Hunt, Hunter stage, but he's also going to be an assist trophy. So he's kind of just, he's kind of bending some rules Yeah, that's here. true. That's true. He was so gigantic in the map compared to everyone else oh, yeah. when he comes out of the assist trophy. It's like, it's kind of weird. He definitely looks like a boss. Well, the other big one that I'm excited to see is Termina Moon as an assist trophy. Yeah. Because I am a fan oh my of Majora's gosh, That Mask. was so cool. That was awesome. Well, yeah, that aside, it's so cool, like how the animation went and it came in. It's virtually, it looks like it's virtually impossible to get out of, which is awesome because that's kind of how it's like in Majora's Mask where, you know, the moon's going like, to crash no matter what until you beat the game. Unless you have the we game. seen Skull and Kid. That's so cool. Have we seen Skull Kid as an assist trophy yet? In, yeah, in any we of did. The, we hit it. I was about to say, hopefully, I would love Skull Kid as a character, but if we've already seen him as yeah. a assist trophy in one of the trailers, then I guess not. I don't remember the E3 yeah, one think, too well. Yeah, I think he kind of belongs as a assist trophy. I mean, I know you probably like him a lot, but I'm not sure if he's like full on fighter, you know, kind of character, but you know, cool. Yeah, we fit trainer. I always bring it back. <laughs> yeah just bring it back to bring it back trainer. to we fit trainer um yeah <laughs> dark samus how'd you feel oh that was so cool oh man i know she's just echo fighter she's gonna play just like regular samus but i love that I, that my metroid prime 3 corruption is like one of the only metroids that i've like really deep dive in like more than just like play through it like i really got invested in that story and everything um i love that skin um, I think they did a really good job with it. It grew on me. Yeah, it, it's really cool looking. I don't know. It's, I know it's just a skin, but it's just like any other game where like they release a new skin. It's yeah. like, oh, that's I cool. Think not only, like, I think not only oh, the skin. Cool. And I think game. it's not only the skin. They gave Dark Samus a lot of personality that you can tell yeah. just by looking at. 
And I think that's what yeah. made me really buy into Dark Samus. Because when I first saw it, I was like, another Echo, okay. But once I've seen the fighting style and the personality, I was like, okay, this one growing on me. I like this. I'm yeah, for this. That was really that was really cool. Here, I want to talk about something. Did you notice that the uh, the Echo Fighter selection option in the game? I did. I I think that's cool. I'm not going to have. I'm going to have everyone displayed. This yeah, is me right. Because it's like, yeah. Because I like. I don't know. I think that just in itself signifies that with this game, they're like giving you every they possible are. control you can actually have. I mean, the whole. We'll get in the music in a bit, but the amount of control they're giving over the UI, everything. It's definitely the quote ultimate. Right. I mean, yeah. No pun intended. This is the ultimate version. Which hopefully that doesn't ruin right. the next upcoming ones, but that's for a different podcast episode. Yeah. Uh, so let's get into the finale of that direct. King K. Rule. I was ultra excited. Yeah. I was happy for that. I one. know. I'll, I'll give it to you. You've been kind of calling that for a long time and actually saying that you've been wanting him for when, a long time. When the Smash 4 ballot came out, I had three characters I really pushed for, which was Banjo and Kazooie. Shantae and King K. Rool. And so I'm really glad to see King K. Rool. I still have hope for Banjo Kazooie, kind of. Because I feel like he, I feel yeah, like Banjo Kazooie was about as requested as, as King K. Rool. And they did say they're heavily looking into the Smash ballot for this Smash Brothers, which is why I'm pretty sure Dark Samus made it, because a lot of people requested for Dark Samus. So I, I have hope. I don't know about Shantae. I know the team behind Shantae has been begging. I think it would be a great choice. Either way, I, I'm also I excited to games, see... I haven't either, but I think I'm the character okay design it. would be great. But I am excited to see King K. Rule. I thought the trailer they had for him was great. Oh, I know. King D D was trying to, like, troll DK. Yeah. And not only that, like, the, the, the like, production quality of the trailer in general was just, like, super good. Just like every every video in this Smash Direct, oh, really every... for it character introduction like they they really like they've done a really good job I know. Con you know in case nintendo listens to this one because they listen to a lot congratulations sakurai good job don't hate us give us a copy of smash 5 before it comes <laughs> out we love you please <laughs> that's uh that's what you call kissing up um yeah I, you know what actually that trailer made me actually like watching reaction trailers because I actually did sit there on YouTube and watch like three people's reaction trailer to that one, seeing how they reacted yeah. when, when King They're DDD so threw himself out. Cause it was a very funny moment. Yeah. They're tro trolling their own community and it makes me really happy. I wonder if they're trolling them because you know, project Dim, you know, because Nintendo loves project Dim had a lot of, of King K rule mods over King DDD. And so I'm wondering mm -hmm. if, they they kind of trolled that in a sense they yeah. nintendo does keep their eye on things like this so oh absolutely uh but let's go over i think it's cool um i think it's cool that his uh like his stomach is like this shield kind of thing oh, yeah. like if you notice like some of the gameplay it's it's i don't know it's awesome like his character design seems really unique and he's so big and you notice how much bigger he is than other characters yes he is. He does seem like, like a heavy. He, he's like as big or bigger than Bowser. Yeah, he is going to be a heavy. And you know me, I actually do like to learn the heavies out. You know, before before yeah. like they revamped Ike and Bowser, I played Ike and Bowser a lot. Not for competitive right. reasons, but I did like to play them. So I, I'm really curious to see how King K. Rule will do. I'm definitely using the pirate costume every time. <laughs> this is really cool. I'm really excited about it. Um, But now... As, as our dear fellow Re uh, Waluigi, let's go ahead and give a moment of silence to some of the characters that we know will not be playable due to their assist trophies. Zero. Okay. You didn't make it. For those who don't know, we, <laughs> we have a soundboard that we came up with. And um, in playing with this soundboard, I have really come to love my Grump Birthday Party soundboard. So it's going to be a thing on this for podcast the Halo fans out for there. the Halo fans. It's going to be a thing on this podcast that grunts will fall on this podcast. Grunts will take the fall for just whatever happens. You know, who cares? And just because <laughs> another grunt takes a bullet to the face. Uh, but Zero, you did not make it. Crystal. Right. Oh, this one hurts. And I know you never yeah. cared about Crystal, but I... Yeah, you've been asking for that for a I've, long time. I've, like, fought for Crystal. 
But Crystal, right? You did not make it. There we go. Shovel Knight, <laughs> surprisingly. Yeah. You didn't make it. Dead. And I thought I he was <laughs> highly requested from the Smash Ballot. And he even got his own amiibo. Like he, Shovel Knight's gotten a lot of treatment from Nintendo for a third party character. Yeah, you're right. So I thought Pretty he was cool. gonna make it as a character. But he did not make it. Yeah. Knuckles. <laughs> you did not make it. I'm surprised they didn't make Knuckles I a am. Echo Fighter for Sonic. Well, not even Echo Fighter, it's just in general, Knuckles. Knuckles will be a good fighter. Yeah, she has her, I mean, yeah, that's true. But I always think, I don't know, I could, it, if they're going to do anything for the community, they could have done Echo Fighter. But I mean, I'm not that passionate about it, so it's not a huge deal to me. But it is sad she didn't make it. She? Knuckles is she? I'm pretty sure she is a she. Um, I may be wrong, completely Are wrong. Are you but assuming I'm pretty sure the gender? Knuckles. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we don't do that here. I'm not gonna answer we don't that. do that here. Uh, <laughs> he or she, Knuckles, should have made it, I think. But to our fallen brothers, another grunt. So I'll take a fall for y'all. Yeah. And then we've already talked about the Tournament of Moon, Rathalos. I think another noteworthy assist trophy that I really like was the clap trap from uh, Donkey Kong. Little gators jumping around. Yeah. It's funny. When I hear clap trap, I think of Borderlands. Um, which I know you probably haven't played, but yeah, no, it was kind of cool. I like they've had to don't, added don't, those. As don't a give me up. The gaming community, they're, they're very <laughs> serious about these things. If they know I don't play Borderland, I'm done. We're done. This podcast is already done. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it's okay. Oh man. So out of these new characters, who do you think you're going to play with the most? Uh, the, just in general, like all the new characters out of, out of, from this direct, we'll go, we'll go into from the new characters as well that they announced at E3, but out of this direct, out of Simon Belmont, Richter, Crom, Dark Samus and King K rule, who do you think you're, who are you most excited to get your hands on? Um, uh, probably King K rule the most. Uh, there's a lot of hype around him in general and it's not, I'm not just like trying to like go with the mainstream or anything. I just feel like, you know how I've always felt about Ike. I don't like Ike, how he plays. I don't like playing against Ike. So Krom's kind of out for me. Dark Samus, um, I don't know. He, she's, she's just Samus. It's just a cooler looking Samus. And then Richter and Simon, they seem really cool. I don't know a lot about them. So just because I don't have a, like a much of a connection to that franchise, as much as I do with the Donkey Kong franchise, King K. Rule is definitely the one I'm most excited about. But I will say, That's Simon's right. Whip looks awesome. I'm like, most that excited is for really King K. Rool, exciting to me. But I think to actually play, I'm definitely going yeah. to try out Simon Belmont. Yeah. I think he looks he's going to be... He does. He, he looks like a character that can make a lot of combos. Because I feel like King K. Rule, I feel like the trailer didn't show much about his fighting style. They showed a little bit, but they didn't yeah. go in-depth. They actually went kind of in-depth with Simon Belmont and Richter. Mm-hmm. And they look like they have a lot of potential. Yeah, I think it'd be really so cool. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not too excited to try Krom. I think Krom will be fun. Uh, but I feel like that in between Roy, I feel like that in between Roy and Ike, he's, he's going to be kind of awkward. It's an, it's an awkward speed and heaviness with, with Roy. I feel like Roy's always kind of been awkward to use. He's not uh, that great. Of I feel a, like Marth is is the quick one. Like a, a lot of the pros see Roy as like not that great. And I mean, don't get me wrong, Roy's our boy, but <laughs> Roy's our boy. Uh, Roy's our boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think about 103 stages? I'm excited, I'm, especially with the hazards it. off. I know. With, especially with the hazards off and a battlefield and Omega stage for each. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. You have no idea. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to use morph stages as much. But okay, I disagree on that because, dude, stage morph. I think okay for me, it was one of the coolest innovations I've seen. Um, and I kind of like wanted to relate it to. Um, so you know, we both have seen and we've are excited about the new Super Mario Party coming out oh, later yeah. this year. Oh yeah. Um, and like the way I see the stage morph is kind of the way that I've seen them innovate stuff with the Mario Party. Like each individual person gets a dice block in that game. It's like they've taken a aspect of a game that's been around forever and they've like innovated it in some way that it not expected. I didn't expect either of those innovations of something that's like so standard in these games. And um, I don't know. I'm excited. I think it's cool. Um, 
I, one reason I think it's cool is like, so I know a lot of people who play the older games, especially like Melee and stuff, there's um, a lot of study and like enough playing time done to realize that certain matchups favor according to the stage you're on. So like I learned recently when I went to that Melee tournament a couple weeks ago um, that Marth is favored against Fox like 60-40 on Final Destination in, in Melee. Uh, and so stuff like that, you know, that's interesting to me for like the pro scene because I'm not sure if this ever becomes a legal part of the game, uh, like a legal stage thing. But the stage morph kind of splits that difference where like if you're, you know, you, you select uh, two stages that, you know, you, your matchups will probably be good up against and like you can counter, you can counter each other's stage pick. And then so you're getting a little bit of both. In each each section of the game, and it's exactly half, I'm sure. Well, fortunately, we get to pick stages before our characters in this one. Yeah, that's true. I, I, yeah, and I I wanted to talk about that too, but I don't know. I feel like if uh, I don't know if, if this comes down to like a people who play a lot together. Like I'm guessing you and I will play a lot, and so we'll know our each other's like main picks usually. And so like even if it is before the character selection we can both probably we'll probably both end up strategically picking a stage right regardless even if it is before so it's like uh if 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 this was if they picked stages before melee everyone before they played hungry box would pick a bad jigglypuff stage right, <laughs> right. so because they know who they play so i mean you're right we picked first but i don't know how much that really matters as far as like playing a lot against cer certain people or knowing your opponent and like the pro scene but i just think the stage morphs really cool uh, honestly it's like i think it's weird I, but i think that I was the think coolest thing concept. i saw in the direct i do think it's a great concept uh i think personally i'm not going to use it as much but i might i might change my mind on it but um hey if we if we play you're gonna be using it <laughs> <laughs> all right yes sir um, That's right <laughs> with with 103 stages being set i'm excited to see cornelia coming back on the main because oh, yeah. i think it was on the 3ds version uh but mm -hmm. it wasn't on the the console version wii u uh the right. dk stages are coming back they bring it back a, a termina bay i'm oh, excited you mean great bay? yes i'm so great excited bay is awesome. for great bay to come back oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> i'm so glad to see that damn turtle yeah and if you turn off hazards he probably will just never go away so Ooh, you can always right. see him I wonder if Tingle yeah. will stay there. I, I see that's not a stage I'm turning hazards off for though. Like right, yeah, that that's a stage you play for the fun. That's that one stays. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about. I think it's cool that um, they're gonna have a battlefield and Omega version of each stage. So like, so like they, they said it's actually like 300 something stages if you look at it that way. Yeah, which is, I think with, it's really with, cool. Speaking of Mario Party though, what you said earlier, you gave your Mario Party example. That'd be great if they had a stage themed off of a Mario Party game. I don't think we've had that. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't think we have either. I've never have some even cool stage ha hazards. I could think. Yo, of. Oh yeah, that would be really cool. Just thinking about it, like uh, that Thwomp stage that they showed off at E3 for the New Super Mario Bros. I mean, mm -hmm. as a Thwomp could fall on you in the middle of the game. I mean, that's oh, yeah. easy right there. I've always I've never said even they thought needed about that. Uh, that's really cool. I've always said they needed a stage based off the roller coaster in Pina Park from sunshine oh yeah like, you yeah, know yeah how they yeah. have those stages we talked about especially this. yeah they they also have this the stage for sunshine where you know the platform just moves around delfino with, plaza yeah i wish they had one that would like stay on the roller coaster and you would like have the mecha bowser as a stage hazard that'd be awesome oh uh, yeah that is pretty cool um let me let, let's uh i want to talk a few about a few more things uh so like you were saying that they've they've updated some stuff about the rules and um i think I think I've kind of noticed watching the direct and watching everything that I've seen about uh, the new Smash is um, they're, they're just like really focused on like the quality of life for the game. So like, you know, every little thing you have control over, obviously. And then in the, the menu, there's like, you just have every option you could possibly imagine. And one thing that I noticed is like, this is just a indication that they're really worried about. Like they're really, they really care about the quality of life of like, just the the whole game in general is like they have a rule set quick access. I don't know if you saw that where like you can set like pretty much like hot but um like buttons that you would press that would have like okay this button means 
three stock, five minutes. This one means four stock, eight minutes, you know? And so I think stuff like that, I think is really cool that, and like just in general, they had a bunch of rule changes and updates. Yeah, the rule um, changes I think were awesome. I'm glad they did that. Yeah. yeah. What did you think about the, um, this is okay. This is something I'm excited for. I forget. I think you call it Smashdown. That seems really cool. What it is is you go into a mode where if you you play a match, the spiders from the last match you played are cannot be selected. So yes. like it's really fun because you can like say you're about to play someone and you're both good with Fox. You can like race to Fox and whoever gets Fox gets them for the game. And then the other person doesn't get to play them the rest of the like whatever amount of time you guys play. You know, I just I love that strategy. Like even to the point of like you know spamming Fox as fast as you can. So your opponent won't get on. I think yeah. what I'm excited about, especially with you, is when we know we're just going to sit down and just go for it, kind of doing an Iron Man run where we just go through that whole roster. One, yeah. one of us will get half the roster, the other one will get the other half. Yeah, we that's kind of what Smash Nine will do, but we get even more control over it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they've really, they've really focused on getting a lot of details right. I know. Great job, Nintendo. Give us a, give us a copy you know, a week before the game comes out, and we'll really, you know, tell everyone all the great stuff about it. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> great job, Sakurai. We're not going to fight with you about Waluigi, <clears throat> though it should be Wat time. <laughs> Wat time. <laughs> all right. Well, outside of Smash, there's a couple other little bit of bits of news that happened throughout the week. Anything in particular you would like to talk about? Actually, since we're still on Smash, I know Evo is a topic you wanted to talk about. Yeah. Hopefully uh, well, Smash 5 I mean, gets to make it to the Evo after that Smash 4 tournament, because for those who don't know, the two characters that got booed out on that one for, oh, for yeah. picking Bayonetta and just didn't decide to play, yeah, Mr. Wizard wasn't too happy about that. And it seems like the Melee community and the Smash 4 community and probably Smash 5 community probably won't be there for the next Evo, unfortunately because of that yeah um i wonder how much that actually is gonna hold up uh there's just such a demand for those games i know but mr wizard is one of them gone for a while now yeah you know? I, I don't know too much about that um and in general i feel like our knowledge on evo is you know nothing compared to people out there so if someone out there listening that love evo just know we aren't like long-time viewers but yeah no uh it the whole thing about bayonetta you know they the final two the winner and the runner-up both played Bayonetta. A lot of people consider that is what killed the the pro community of Smash 4, unfortunately. <clears throat> also, it looks like it, she might have the same combo set that is so overpowered in Ultimate, which is kind of unfortunate. But may, you know, maybe they'll fix it. You know, never know. And honestly, with the amount of changes they're making, it might not be overpowered anymore. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. But what else happened at EVO? Well, I have a list of the winners. I'm just going to go through them just for people uh, to know. Um, I have a thing. I'm just going to kind of go over everything. And then I have a little thing I wanted to say about Melee. Street Fighter V, the top two were Problem X and Tokido. Congrats. Dragon Ball Fighter Z, which I'll say, Dragon Ball Fighter Z looks really cool. I'm not even that huge a Dragon Ball Z fan. I know you are. Um, <clears throat> and the animation style alone in that game makes me want to play it. Not even the fact that it's pretty cool characters that I do kind of like, you know, I don't really follow Dragon Ball Z that well, but, and the fact that the, uh, the fighting in itself is like super innovative. We're talking about Dragon Ball fighters for the switch coming up soon, right? It's already out on the other uh, platforms. Yeah. It's already out on the other platforms. Um, but yeah, they played it at Evo and the, I just watched a bunch of it and the animation style looks so cool. It does look good. Um, I've kind of focused on that because it is just that cool to me, but, uh, so first, first, second place, Sonic Fox and go one. Congratulations! <laughs> Good job, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, congratulations to the winner and runner-up. <laughs> Tekken 7 was low high, and Cludons, I don't really know exactly how. Congratulations! There you go. Guilty Gear XRD Reversion 2, Amido and Surugaya. Congratulations! <laughs> You're getting right, official and then we, player as, five medals here. Okay, that, yeah, that's we're an honor. Out medals. That is an <laughs> honor. Yeah, you're right. Um, Smash four. Obviously, we said they both played Bayonetta, which is kind of sad. But it was Defeated. Lima and, Cap and Captain <laughs> Zack. <laughs> the whole community is defeated after that. <laughs> um, 
bunch yep. of grunts took a fall for y'all. <laughs> um, all right, and then the melee, it was Leffen uh, played Fox, and then Armada played Peach and Fox. So, congratulations! The, uh, congratulations. Um, one thing I I I've talked to some people that um follow that community, the melee community, really closely, and. Um, I've, they, I'm at the very beginning of like following it closely myself, I, you know, I went to a tournament recently and it got me really excited for it. So, but one thing I found is that like, um, apparently the 2018 smash, uh, melee scene is like really changing. Like, um, some of the people who've been around for, you know, 14 years or whatever, I think it's been out, what is it? 14 years? So 17 years. So it's an old game. And, um, a lot of the, uh, major players have been around forever actually didn't even like get that far i mean i mean it's, it's not, a pretty good bit of them did but like they definitely didn't like go all out and um have like an amazing showing this time um but i don't know it's just cool that like something a game so old is like still getting a lot of new players oh, yeah. that are like coming and like you know re- reinvigorating the pro scene and being like yeah this is melee an old game rapid. this is something that we love yeah it's awesome melee Melee, the melee community is super dedicated. I mean, obviously, it's 17 years old. And they're still at Evo every year, uh, and that's really cool. And then one little highlight that I did actually get to watch um, live was uh, Armada. Uh, he play. Uh, he actually got second, but Armada has um, hadn't been defeated in a melee tournament at Evo since like 2012. He was like super. He had a super long win streak. He's doing really great. And um, uh, Swedish Delight. They played a game, and um, it started out. Uh, Switch Light played Sheik the whole time, and um, Armada played. Started the first game at, with Peach, um, which I think is an interesting pick. I mean, I know Peach is good, but um, for me, someone coming in that doesn't know a whole, like, a whole lot about it, it was really cool to me to see like Peach just like get a spot in the pro scene. Um, and so that happened, and he actually lost to Swedish Light, and I think. Like it was kind of like a wake up call to Armada a little bit because the next round he clutch switched to Fox, and they went to final game because it's the best of three, and um, he actually got defeated by Swedish Delight. And Armada has not lost in so long, and the crowd just went crazy. Swedish Delight got up and was like freaking out, and his like I think it was like when his partner came over and like uh, hugged him and was like really excited. It was like such a cool moment. It was like a little highlight of Evo for the melee community. And nice. um, I mean, Armada did end up going way farther in the tournament than Swedish Light did in general because the losers bracket. Uh, I mean, he was, did a really good job. Yeah, I mean, this what competition's about. You know, someone will be on top for a while, and yeah, there's we a get really excited in, once someone evolved, finally yeah. gets there. Right. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, I was really excited about Evo in general. Um, nice. I didn't get to watch a lot of it as much as I wanted to, but the melee scene is something I'm getting really get into. And uh, Smash Four, even though the bayonetta stuff's going on, it's fun to watch. Right. Obviously, we spent almost the entire episode talking about Smash itself, so we love it. I mean, we're excited. The the we direct is out. We're we're happy. Uh, do we have anyone else that gets a congratulatory Player Five medal? Um, Hungry Box playing Jigglypuff. You got top four. It's pretty cool, right? Hey, but no other Evo winners. I didn't watch. Oh all no, of that's it. Watched. No, no, that that was it. Um, but yeah, that was all the winners, and it was really fun to watch. Nice. Uh, another bit of news. Uh, did you know a Twitch bot beat Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild? That's weird. <laughs> so you, what, the, what the Twitch bot was is it's a bot that was that was in Twitch that was I guess connected to the game somehow. But anyways, people in that server wrote down the actions that Link had to do. Like they would tell him walk forward, hit the B button, do all this. Oh, so it it was like Twitch plays, which is where the chat um, plays the game together. Oh, yeah. Well, they beat Breath of the Wild, which I'm surprised that people could do that. (laughs) Right. That's crazy. That's like, I wonder how long it took. I don't know if you knew, but... I have yeah, no the Twitch, idea. Twitch plays po- Pokemon was the first time they tried that, and that was a huge following. There were so many memes a lot about it. There was like the the team that they beat the Elite Four with collectively, like you know, they're like the world basically, like millions of people playing. Um, they like made memes about them, like Lord Helix. Helix is a Pokemon, and um, he uh, it was like Lord Helix and uh, Bird Jesus was um, 
Pidgeotto. <laughs> it was pretty cool, nice. but I didn't know that. I mean, you said Twitch bot. I didn't know you meant Twitch plays. That's that's really cool. That makes me happy because there's so many options and like controls you can do in Breath of the Wild. I'm surprised. I know. That Congra- happened. Good job, people. Yeah. Con- congratulations. congratulations. Congratulations to the people who go. actually come together for that. <laughs> uh, y'all get a player five medal because that's the thing now. It seems like coordination, especially because I know in Twitch plays Pokemon, I actually was part of that a little bit. Um, there was always someone there trolling, trying to of like. Of course, that's that's why I'm so surprised. Like, how did y'all pull this off? <laughs> I know it's so cool. I love it. <laughs> we, we we that alone has restored my faith in the people. So that's why y'all get player five medals. Good job. Yeah. Uh, anything um, else before we get to yeah, the end um, of the podcast you got for us? Yeah, uh, I wanted to talk about the newest Hearthstone expansion came out August seventh, so Tuesday. Nice. And um, yeah, I mean. I obviously, you know, I'm like, this Hearthstone is probably the game I play the most on a, you know, just in general. So I could talk about it all day, honestly. Uh, but the the fact that the Hearthstone expansion release is news, kind of, but like for people who, do, who don't play and for people who play that know this, um, you know, Hearthstone gets an expansion every four months. So there's three expansions a year. And at the end of a year, there's a standard rotation, which I don't really explain that that is. So as someone who's not huge into Hearthstone as much as you are, the expansion packs are basically new cards that can right. be played. So, yeah, so Hearthstone's a collective card game, and you play uh, just against people online. And every expansion, there's about 135 new cards released, which is a big, that's a big chunk of cards um, for, a, in general. I mean, that's a lot of cards, so it's, a big uh it's a big change in the uh how the game's played so like you know we'll have we'll be playing and then like you know the meta's kind of figured out we everyone knows what the best decks are and how to counter them and you know there's like a tier list set up and like you know everyone knows how the game is like what at this moment is figured out and then boom expansion comes in it mixes up the meta it um you know makes people play these crazy new decks that they release and then aside from the fact that we're trying to figure the meta out and like play the best decks you know there's also these really crazy combos they throw in it's like really fun bizarre new cards to play with and um it's really fun but they have it every four months so it's not that big of a big news expansion but um what i did want to talk about and what i think is big news is they did this the first thing that first time they ever did something like this now this is something that a lot of card games have done like i think magic does it i'm pretty sure um but they had pre-release party and that's what I'm really excited about as far as like the game goes in general because the Hearthstone community is it's a lot bigger than a lot of people know. I mean, it makes sense because it's a Blizzard game. There's a lot of people who just play Blizzard games in general. Um, and so there's like it's a big community and uh, there's limited support of like ways to play in real life scenarios like physically at like a location. They've tried they've done a lot to like beef up that community, but this is like specific. It was really cool. So what I want to say is that uh, so at least August seventh, but August fourth and fifth, so that's uh, Saturday and Sunday, just over the weekend. Um, yeah, the Saturday and Sunday, they had pre-release party. So what it is is they had authorized fireside gatherings, which is what they call their meetups. They had authorized fireside gatherings in every uh, across the globe. It was an international thing, and if you went to one of those authorized gatherings then you actually got to open your packs and play them early, which is something they've never done. And um, I just thought it was really cool. I feel like they're really, they're putting, they're investing time in like the community's like welfare and like overall happiness of the community. Um, so yeah, it made me really excited. It was, it was really fun because it was like, you got to play against other people after the fireside. And um there wasn't like, it wasn't like you could just queue up online to some random person that has these cards and you don't. So it was like fair and fun and just great. I mean, it was it was really cool. And I, I mean, that in itself boosted Twitch stream views of Hearthstone like an incredible amount. Because, you know, there's only so many authorized fireside gatherings. I think there's only like 10 in the U.S. Up total. And, you know, I couldn't go to one and most people probably couldn't go to one. So it was really a good way to like boost their image on Twitch to like everyone that could possibly go to one. So, you know, if you're a big streamer, you're obviously going to make it to one of those. And so we all got to watch all our favorite streamers at these firesides, opening cards we weren't going to get for another couple more days. It was really cool. I really liked it. Nice. Yeah. Um, congrats. 
Congrats to the Hearthstone. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like... <laughs> happy, happy for y'all. <laughs> yeah, like I said, Rin's definitely the Hearthstone really cool. person way over me. But, um... Nice. Yeah, I mean, one day I'll get you into it. One day. But it's kind of like, it's one of those things where, like, I would kind of steer clear with it unless you have a bunch of money to blow. <laughs> That's which, what it seems to be uh, like for Blizzard games. Which me, just out of college now and and yeah. trying to take care of life i don't have that much money to blow but uh i guess a game that wouldn't take too much money to blow it's a lot like hearthstone that recently that got a release date is artifact it's going to be another card game only 20 dollars buy-in i think that's it and it's the dota card game i mean we're not going to get into it too much but is that even something that you're even looking forward to or just meh whatever oh yeah i'm, I'm definitely interested in it um i'm a little weary of it uh I know the the um the like collectible card game and um trading card game community is like, whoa, this is gonna be big. Like it looks like it's gonna be really good. Um I think that Dota's popularity already is astronomical and then they're they're going off of what they've learned from all these other card games that have popped up popped up over time. Like her soul in itself is like super popular and then because of that there's been a lot of new card games, online card games that have been releasing and they're like, we're getting in on that market. It looks like it's going to be good. It looks like they're going to do a good job. Um, it's, you know, they have the money behind them of, of steam, you know, cause that's valve, uh, creating it. Um, so yeah, no, it, it looks promising. And the fact that it's $20 buy-in, that's good news. Um, I'm guessing that doesn't include like every single card possible. I would be very, very surprised if it was, but yeah, anyways, I, I'm excited for it. It'd be cool. Nice. Well, we got two more quick things we're just going to talk about real quick, then we're going to get into our our games that Renan was teasing. Um, a new video game console announced in China that uses AMD technology. I think it's only going to be exclusive to China, but I think it's interesting, for one, mm -hmm. one, that it's going to be exclusive to China, and two, that AMD is now throwing their hat into the console game. I mean, recently we have Google apparently throwing their hat into the console game. It just seems like Everyone's trying to throw into the console game. Yeah, um, I think AMD is not necessarily trying to like make a whole new like console. Like, I don't know if they're trying to be like a big competitor as far as like having a console. I think it's more like they're just trying to get AMD on all platforms. Um, actually, I don't know, I don't know if you know because a lot of people don't really follow like tech like this, but um, AMD is like trying to really really boost up their game. They uh, recently made a profit on their um you know just in general and uh they released that and it was the first time in a long time they've made a profit because they're usually they're like a they like kind of break even most of the time in historically and the uh xbox one x I, if it doesn't have amd inside it the next one's going to amd is trying to like kind of get their chips everywhere um because they're they're kind of in the leading market for like APUs, which are like graphics cards and processors mixed. And um, so it makes sense that they're trying to make it a new console in China because that's an expanding market as well. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to keep an eye on that. Uh, last bit of quick news, because we did say that we talk about movies a bit. And Renan is yeah. a huge Disney fan. I don't think either of us have seen it yet, but Christopher Robin is now in theaters, the live action with uh, Ewan McGregor as Christopher yeah. Robin. There's some going to be a lot of good memes that come from that. Hello movie. there. General Kenobi. <laughs> I've seen a meme where, where Pooh is coming out with four lightsabers after Ewan Yo, McGregor yeah. says hello there. So that was I think I sent you that meme. You did it's send a great me that one. meme. Thank you for that one. I needed that one. Uh, yeah. I'm excited to see it. I know, <laughs> go ahead, and I'll give a tease here. Um, I know we're going to have a podcast in the future talking about all of Disney's new live actions, their future of live actions and such like that. It's going to be a great yeah. topic as we get there. With that being said, we promised some games. And so right. we have two games for you today. First one is going to be trivia. Uh, and what this is, I have five clues for a character. Renan does not know that character. After every clue... He has to guess. He has to, he has to give a guess. And after his fifth guess, if he does not get it, he loses. 
if he does get it, he wins. In which case, whoever wins this game gets to call on who gets to start for our second game because we have two for you today. So yeah, double you, the games. Are you prepared, Ryan? I am. Yeah, I'm ready. About ready as I'll ever be, I guess. All right. First clue. He follows in his uncle's footsteps. Follows in his uncle's footsteps. Yes. Right. Um. Um. That's a hard one. It is a hard one. Yeah. Well, it's the first one. I'm guessing they can gra- gradually get a little easier. Hopefully, mm, maybe. Maybe. Are you just gonna be that? This is like gonna be the Dark Souls of <laughs> trivia, I guess. Thanks. Who knows? Um, <laughs> um, follows his uncle in his uncle's footsteps. Um. Do you like? Would you like to just pass on this one? I know this one's gonna. This is probably the most difficult one on. Um. Because it's so hard guess. to narrow it down. Go for it. Is it Axel from Kingdom Hearts? No. Does he have an uncle? No, he doesn't. Is, I mean, is that the failure sound that, bit? That is the failure from Smash Melee. You're welcome. Oh, okay. Um, I my, Nintendo really Insider, <laughs> uh, my Nintendo Insider suggested I have that. Uh, no, oh, okay. but who knows? Yeah. Because it's Kingdom Hearts. I mean, he could have an uncle. We just don't know yet why. I mean. Oh, yeah. Literally anything's possible in Kingdom Hearts. That storyline is so convoluted. Listen, We're not no, it's not. That. The storyline is not convoluted. Listen, everyone is Xehanort, and everyone who's not Xehanort is Sora. It's that simple. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, no, you know what? You know, everyone that's listening to this podcast, everyone that's agreeing with you that it's not complicated, absolutely loves Kingdom Hearts and is obsessed. Everyone that agrees with me that it's super convoluted is Listen, the right. I, I can go right all lines. day on Kingdom Hearts, <laughs> so we're, we're going to try, we're gonna try to keep have. that to a minimum. I mean, over our personal phone conversations, yes. I'm sure the audience will one day learn, especially because Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming out soon. Oh, yeah. I'm actually excited for that, too. Uh, let's see what's back in the game. Let's see. Let's, let's look at this. His title on the Nintendo 64 became the fastest-selling game in U.S. history at the time of its release. Okay. Um, is it Donkey Kong? It is not. Failure. Okay. Failure. Dang it. All right, go ahead and the next one. Uh, renamed by Nintendo once the series became more popular. Okay. Uh, renamed by Nintendo. So Nintendo made this game. Yes. Was it something weird like Rare made it, but... You don't I, have time. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, Nintendo. not part Ni- of the game. I'm not going to say Nintendo made him, but Nintendo had him renamed. Okay. Um, is it Conquers from Conquers Bad Fur Day? No. Failure. Okay. All right. He is in mm-hmm. the current Smash Brothers. Okay, so 64 character from Smash Brothers follows in his uncle's footsteps. Is this my fourth question or clue? Say what? Do I have one more? Is yeah, this you have one last clue? clue? You have one more okay, clue. Well, this one is more. your guess number okay. four. Uh, okay. Um, he's in Smash Brothers, so... Okay, what, the N64 question, was that his debut game? Or is that part of the guess? You don't have to tell me if it's not part of the guess. It was maybe. not... Maybe under his new name. Okay, that makes sense. It um, may or may not have been in, his debut game under his new name. He, but it was definitely when he... Smash Ultimate? He is he is in Smash Brothers, yes. Well, everyone's gonna be in Smash Ultimate. Here everyone in Smash is in Smash Ultimate. Everyone Except is here. For... That's like I say. Wham. Wham. <laughs> <laughs> it's wham time. It's wham time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so is it? How many Kong? Is it Diddy Kong? Congratulations! Ooh, yes. You know, I was, oh, I and felt so I, I felt so horrible when I had that one because you know what my last one was, and I figured you were. I had it was he wears a red cap. Oh, I would have totally gotten it. No, I think well, I was trying to get it to Mario because Mario was renamed by Nintendo from Jumpman to Mario. It followed but I know he was in the would have been weird. Or... Well, followed in his uncle's footsteps could have been misconstrued because everyone says that Jumpman is actually not Mario but related to him that's why I said renamed by Nintendo once the series became more popular yeah no but that the was whole a good thing was uh, 
So the Nintendo 64 game that was the fastest selling in US history at the time was Diddy Kong Racing. Okay. And he was renamed from Donkey Kong Jr. Okay. Donkey Kong Jr. So yes. is he is he DK's nephew? Yes. Okay. That makes sense. So my other guess was Fox. Um so I almost guessed Fox at oh, that time. Oh, Fox did have a father he follows in his footsteps. Yeah, it wasn't his uncle though. That's why that I was, was kind of That was good. I wish I wish that you would have went good. for Fox on that one cuz the where's a red cap. I was hoping to trick you with Mario. I wouldn't have guessed Mario. I think I was so close to Diddy Kong by the last clue I would have gotten it. But You did. You did stick yeah. with Rare. You had Donkey Kong and Conquer. You and Conquer funny enough is in diddy kong racing so he is and i, I thought because you know we have a we have differing views on conquer's views bad for on day, conquer's but, bad for a day yeah but um great game. because because you asked it and I, I know you love the game so much um i didn't know anything about the backstory i i guess he may have had an uncle that he followed in his footsteps so that was why i guessed it um but yeah that was good thank you i learned some stuff today I'm glad you did. I hope the audience did as well. This will be next week. Rindon will try to trick me in some questions. So be ready for that. If, yeah. if we haven't scared y'all off by now. Right. <laughs> and now it brings us to our second game, which is going to be categorized under the bomb blast. So how this game is going to be played is we're both going to shoot some stuff back and forth to each other. In this case, we're categorizing it under quotes. We both have tw 10 quotes each from Disney characters, and we are going to give those quotes. The catch is we can only get five wrong. That's not five wrong each. It's five wrong in general, as in I yeah. can miss four and then Renan can miss the fifth one and he will lose the game. Yeah. So I don't know about, I, I, we kind of talked about this, but didn't the idea from that kind of come from Mario Party? Where um, the Bob space on yes. Mario Party Five, a Mario Party yeah. mini game did kind of inspire this game, uh, so that's why. And we also have our wonderful <laughs> bomb sound over here that will play once we're wrong, right? And that, so that, it signifies the countdown from five. Yes. So we have ten each. If no one gets the five, I guess it's a draw. But with that being said, Rendon, you won the trivia game, so you get to pick. Do you want to guess first, or do you want to quote first? Hmm. It's a tough one. I think I'm going to guess first. You think you're going to guess first? Yeah. All right. So my first quote so will these be... these are 10 Disney quotes, and they're from, like, famous Disney movies that we both have seen. I think we kind of... Yes, we, we've agreed about. not to... No, we can't throw any ultra trick questions like we're like we're off on an adventure because they probably all say that uh yeah. we have to have some characteristics in there from from them they have to be they have to be guessable right and so but we have to trick each other as well so okay let me ask you this are you gonna say main character are you gonna just kind of say are you gonna do your best in character i don't know just just go you do you we'll see how it goes. are you saying how i'm <laughs> gonna impersonate it yeah i i think i'm gonna kind of be in character uh, some of them, I okay. don't remember exactly how they said it. I think but, uh, some of mine depend on inflection, so I'll, I'll, I'll right. try being character. It's going to be embarrassing, but you know, whatever. It that's matter. fine. Totally embarrassing. Your whole life's embarrassing. Your whole life's embarrassing. <laughs> Where's the failure sound? <laughs> failure. There you go. Your whole life. <laughs> um, so my first quote. I'm packing you an extra pair of shoes in your angry eyes, just in case. Mrs. Potato Head. Good job. Yeah. I kept it simple for um, you. Yeah. Uh, I see. I think I see the strategy you're going for. Um, so I'm going to counter it. Um, all right. I got one. I'm a damsel. I'm in distress. I can handle this. Meg. Megara. Okay. There you go. Yeah, that was good. We're not that bad at this. So far. <laughs> Let's see. What do I have here? All right. This is kind of the end of the quote. It won't be the full quote. It'll be the end of it. And don't underestimate the importance of body language. Uh, that's Ursula from Little Mermaid. Yes. Dude, good. All right. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting all strategic now. Um, 
All right. There's a big hunk of world out down there with no fence around it. There's a big hunk of wor world down there with no fence around it. Yep. Hmm. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, huh. Big hunk of world down there with no fence around it. I don't know. I'm taking, I'm taking an L. Yep. <laughs> we are down All right. one. All right. Four more left. That was who, who? Tramp from Lady and the Tramp. Really? See, I was trying to think of something yeah. spacey or something. I don't know. That was a good one. No so fence I, around it. Fence, I'm I, think, yeah, I, I see. Ooh. So I guess yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to give you a good counter then. Yeah. Once in a while, someone amazing comes along, and here I am. Oh, man. Once in a while, someone amazing comes along. Here I am. Oh, gosh. Um, uh, it sounds like a bad guy, like a funny bad guy. It could be. Uh, it might not be. Which is it? Is it Peter Pan? <laughs> it is not. Dang it. Who was it? Tigger. Okay. We are down to two. Sense. Wow. Three we're, left. No, we're down to three. Yeah, we're down to three. Three left, but we have two down. Right. As in, as down, in we, we're down two. The countdown at the left is three, but, but the right. bomb has gone down two. Okay. It's my turn. Yes. Um, all right. Why do I fix everything I touch? Uh, I think his name is Felix. He's, he's the guy in Wreck-It Ralph. I know that. Fix-It Felix. Fix-It Felix Jr. Yeah, that was good. Yes. A lot of people just call him Fix-It Felix, but his name is Fix-It Felix Jr. Are, are we going to count his that as wrong? Or am I safe? No, 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 no. No, safe. no, no, no. You're safe. You're safe. I was just saying, a lot of people get... I mean, I'm being like that guy that gets all specific, but in you're, the you're... song, he says he gets his hammer from his dad. So, anyways. Yeah, you're wonderful. You're wonderful Disney side of you. Well, here's my next one. Well, there's the usual things. Flowers, chocolates, promises you don't intend to keep. Cogsworth from... Ooh, yeah. good job. Right. Um, all right, so we have three, three, like, we have three more left. That three we left, get wrong. yes. All right. All right, we're getting, we're getting real here, dude. We're getting we're real. We're getting real. Let's go. Um, <laughs> um, let me find it. Don't be afraid, young man. My bark is worse than my bite. Oliver? Is that your guess? Final guess? Yes. Okay. It's not that's not it. <laughs> Damn. Lost. Yeah. Um it the the key was don't be afraid, young man. So it's an old character. And yeah. my bark is worse than my bite. Uh is Grandma the Willow from Pocahontas. Oh, wow. She did great. Yeah. Bark. Bait and switch there. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe that was a little hard. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Oh, I have another. Okay. All right. Your turn. We have two left. We have two left. Okay. So I have some strategy here. Let's see. Um, how do so I whoever, we, whoever gets I the last one wrong, the bomb right blows up on. I, whoever gets the fifth loses. one wrong, the bomb blows up. So... Put okay. that thing back where it came from, or so help me. Mike Wazowski. Good job. All right. Um, let me get this straight. You know her. She knows you, but she wants to eat him, and everybody's okay with this? Say that again. He... Say that again. Let me get this straight. All right, let's start from the beginning. Let me get this straight. You know her. She knows you, but she wants to eat him. And everybody's okay with this. It's like a really excited. I don't know how to say it like this character, but just think about it. I, I feel like I know where this is from. I really want this. Oh, I want this one. I know you want it because I know you know it. I really, I know you know it. If you, if you just like think it just right. <laughs> I think it's just right. Let me get this straight. You know her. She knows you, but she wants to eat him. And everybody's okay with this. Oh, you know mm. it, dude. You know it. It sounds familiar. We've watched this together. We've watched this together. We watched a lot of Disney movies together. Yeah, we have. 20 years of Disney movies. 
I feel like. I think you know it. What's your instinct say? Oh man! Don't tell me unless you. For some reason, my instincts are on Frozen, but I know that's not it because we never watched Frozen together. That's true. Talking about like a care or something. Um, man, I don't know. You totally know this. Um, you make one more guess, or you? I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna make a guess. Okay, take your time. He knows. So let me get this straight. You know him. He knows you, but she wants to he- eat him. Or Yeah, let, let me say it one more time. I know it's a confusing one. Let me get this straight. You know her. You know her. She knows you, and she wants to eat him, and everybody's okay with it. Eat him. I know. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of movies with like a... I don't know. I really don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, Timon from Lion King. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Come on. I, I felt like that was one of my easier ones. I was trying to give you an easier one. Yeah. Simba, Simba, Nala. Oh my gosh. And Yeah. So uh, Nala chases Pumbaa. Pumbaa gets stuck in the tree. And Timon says that. He is like, I'm they upset. know each other. I'm upset. I know. Because here's I'm the upset. thing, I wanted this to go. I wanted this, because here's the thing. Now we're at four. So if you miss this I next know. one, you're done. And I really wanted to continue this. I did too. You but know, I we have can, to give. We can tell what no, we have at the end. Yeah, we can tell what we uh, have. I have to put yeah. you down though. No, no, yeah. No, no, no. For sure. We, uh, because we are going to. I'm going to yeah, need a name ahead. here or a title to this person. This person doesn't have a name, but he has a title. Okay. There is no risk because they never come back as boys. There is no risk because they never come back as boys. Yes. Oh, man. Where did you pull this from? Like, dang. This is a very iconic scene. All right. Say it again. There is no risk because they never come back as boys. Oh my goodness. Um, did they say it like that, like you said it? Kind of like that. You know, I'll, I'll, throw, in a, I'll throw in a bone, Renan. Okay. If you really can't bone. think of it, I'll give you another one. I'll give you two options. Just get one. Uh, of them. Okay. Uh, I'll take it. Only I, I I was, lose. This was kind of my unfair one. So I, I have one. I have an unfair one too. Okay. Yet even now, it is not too late. I can save you from the flames of this world and the next. Wow. Okay. I, I was wrong. This is the Dark Souls of the games that we decided <laughs> to play. Hey, um, all right. Um, I'm thinking there's too many things going on now. Um, I can save you from this world and the next. I can save you from the flames of this world and the next. It is yet even now, it is not too late. I can save you from the flames of this world and the next. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and give you the win because I don't know either of those off the top of my head and I feel like I'm failing. Yeah. Yeah, I blew up. That was that was the bomb. And then now I don't have a blow up, but we can, you know, because we'll just get rid of some blocks. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Who said both those? I gotta know. I think our audience wants to know. Uh, there is no risk. They never come back as boys. Is from the coachman in Pinocchio. Okay. When he's talking to the fox oh, about man. bringing it's been forever Pinocchio since to Pleasure I Island. Pinocchio. Wow. Failure. Yet even now, it is not too late. I can save you from the flames of this world and the next. Are from Frollo, Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Right before he puts Asmorel to the flames. All right. Go ahead and tell me the rest you had. Because I, I want to know. I think our listeners would want to know, too. Do you, do you, do you want to go back and forth with it? Or do yeah, you want to go I'll through do all one. of them? All right. Okay. This is one of my easier let's, ones. Let's still try to guess. We'll still go. We'll still go for guessing. Okay, but I lost. So, like, the game's over. We're just kind of guessing. Right? Go for okay. it. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. 
My little baby, off to destroy people. Well, I don't know that one. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, Mushu from Mulan. My little oh, baby, off to one. destroy people. <laughs> that's good. Well, you know how men are. They think no means yes, and get lost means take me, I'm yours. Um, is it that girl from Princess and the Frog? <laughs> no, it's Meg. Meg. From oh, Hercules. yeah, yeah. That's an iconic scene, you, too. You, you, I didn't use that one because I, you gave me a Meg reference Yeah, earlier. I started out with that one. That was my easiest one, for the record. All right. Nice. I don't like confrontation. That was an easy one for... Um, for me, I don't know if that's easy for you. I don't like confrontation. Yeah. It's, it's, it's um, his best line in the movie, I think. Is that from Gardens of the Galaxy? No, I don't think we were doing those kind of Disney movies. At least I wasn't. Um, I, was, I was thinking about, not Gardens of the Galaxy, Thor. The guy, the guy in the, um, the arena. Oh, no. That, that was... You know uh, what I'm yeah, about? I know you're talking about. Um, who, who is it's, it? It's uh, Rex from Toy Story. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That would go for X. Yeah. This is a little harder than I thought it would I be. I know. We, we, we went really hard on each other. Hey, no one takes my wife's mouth except me. Mr. Potato Head. Yes. Easy. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I never look back, darling. It, it distracts from the now. Oh, I'm so, I'm so glad I pinned you down. <laughs> Because I don't know any of these. I know. I should have been, I should have been harder. <laughs> ah. uh, that's Edna from uh, The Incredibles. Nice. <laughs> yeah. If you're scared, just be scarier than whatever is scaring you. If you're scared, just be scarier than whatever is scaring you. Yes. Uh, the easy guess is like something from Monsters Incorporated, but I don't think that's it. I'm glad you included mm. Pixar. I didn't know you were going to do Pixar, and I did do Pixar, so that was refreshing. Um, Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> Dang, we suck. Thumper from Bambi. Dude, dude, I haven't seen Bambi. I watched Bambi once. <laughs> I got scarred from the beginning, and I never watched it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, this is an interesting one. Y'all think you're going to get this? Oh, look, another glorious morning makes me sick. It's a, it's a movie that I know you really appreciate the comedy, like that style of comedy. But I don't know if you actually like this movie. Say it, I, say it again in, in the style they said it. I feel like I know it. Oh, look. Another glorious morning makes me sick. Oh, I want this one. I feel like it wouldn't be Maleficent, although I feel like Maleficent would say that. It's not animated. Does that help you? It's oh, live action. Hmm. I'm but sure. It's kind of like the original there, Disney. Like, it's not a bot Dis Huh? It's not a bot Disney no, one. No, it's Disney. Like, like there's no Star Wars or no, anything. No, it's Disney. Um, no, yeah, I think I think there's people out there that love this movie are like, ah. Oh. Is it from Pete's in the? Is it is it is it from uh Pete in the Hidden Dragon, Giant Dragon, Pete's Dragon? Pete's Dragon. No, yeah. it's uh Winifred Sanderson from Hocus Pocus. Ah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. I wouldn't have gotten that one. You, have you seen Hocus Pocus? I got Pocus? two more. I have not. Dude, that's like a uh, that's like a Halloween must see watch. Really good. You got me. You got me. This one's gonna be really easy. It's not every day you see a horse with two rear ends. It's not that easy. It's <laughs> 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 already see a horse wow. with two rear ends. That's how he says it, right? Yes. See, I know it. I just well, don't... there's something he says right before it. He says a full. He says a small sentence right before it. But if I say it, there's a name in there, so it gives it up. So it's not every day you see a horse with two rear ends. Oh, it's Phil from. Uh... Is it Phil from Hercules? <laughs> Dang. Aladdin. Uh, hey, Abu. Yeah. It's not every day you see a horse with two All rear right. ends. All right, last one. When um, this one is, was one of my hard ones. This is one I didn't think you were gonna get. If I don't love it, I don't swallow. Ooh, I like it. Um, I feel like 
would that is that from uh sword in the stone no nope. uh the witch it's pixar it's pixar if i don't although that would have been a good i, I, I feel like madam it. lady lady whoever it was on on swallows i feel like that's something she would say sword in the stone, um yeah. pixar if I don't love it, I don't swallow. It's kind of after I give you. Pixar, is that the seagull? Seagull from Finding Nemo? Nope. It's um, the bad guy. This, this is this, uh, this is why I said this was like my hardest one. It's the bad guy Anton Ego from Ratatouille. Oh, yeah. nice. He's not actually the bad That's guy. Like my coachman one. Spoilers, but it, the bad guy is that... society <laughs> in that movie. Yeah. Um, uh, so my last one. Oh, you have one more. I forgot. And it, it might be kind of easy. I do have one more. When I look at you, I can feel it. I look at you and I'm home. Dory, Final Nemo. Yes. I got I, I like know that movie by heart. Like, Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think that's right, next, it, right? Next time. Yeah, next time we play this game, though, we got to nerf, uh, <laughs> nerf some stuff. Seriously, nerf this lives. game... Need some nerfs. That was the tough so one. So, what would you say is is the hardest one that I gave you? That you gave me? Out of out of all, yeah, out of all of these, which one? I felt like the Coachman and my Thumper one were the two hardest. Oh, the coach with Frollo being my next. Coachman was the hardest for sure. Thumper was hard, but I think nice. Coachman was the hardest. I mean, that just is a testament to how little I've watched Pinocchio. So, right. What was my hardest? Technically, your Hocus Pocus one would have been the hardest for me you have because. Seen it? I haven't seen it. I thought you had seen it. But you had another good one in there. Uh, the Don't Swallow It, that was really hard. Um, I feel like someone's going to make the, a... I, so wait, he knows you. He knows He knows you, you know him, but she wants to eat him. I already forgot who that was it's from. It's Timon. Who was that from? Lion King. Timon. I thought, like, right. oh I, I, okay. That was a good one. Behind the scenes, I practiced that with my wife, and she immediately got it. But we're huge Disney fans. Well, your wife, your wife is um, a lot smarter than I am. Uh, but that, yes, that is it. That is concludes the game of our podcast. Once this podcast grows, we really want to play games that the audience can really engage with. We have a lot of ideas where the comment section can get in, some polls can get in. So we really hope that you like this podcast. You share it with your friends. We really want to build up. We had a lot of fun. Absolutely. Uh, and last bit of good news that's really just for me and Rendon. Uh, it's only preseason, so who cares? But Saints beat Jacksonville 24 to 20. Heck yeah. Awesome. Yay. Yeah, we probably lost With some that fans. being said, I kind of killed our player five announced there. Player five. Back to life. Player five, we are done. We are out.